Hi and welcome back to the Getting Men Multiculturally podcast. I'm your host, Edith, and this is episode number 21. Today I am going to be talking about why would somebody consider not hiring a professional wedding photographer for their wedding and what are some alternatives that you can do if you do decide to go with that route. So there are a couple of reasons why some couples would decide not to hire a wedding photographer. It's too much money. You are on a tight budget. You want to spend your money on something more important. Uh, You want to spend your wedding budget on something that you value better, like your clothing, food, a number of the guests, or traveling somewhere, or music, or anything. There are so many other things that you can spend your money on on a wedding day. So, Maybe some people feel like that's just not their worth of their money to spend it on a photographer. Another thing is because you don't want to spend your time or waste your time. For some people, it's a waste of time is when you have to uh, pose and uh, do group shots, pose for pictures. And for some couples, that would feel like a waste of time because you want to spend it with your loved ones. You want to celebrate. You want to have fun. You want to talk to other people, eat and dance, and you don't want to be posing for pictures. When couples look into hiring a photographer, sometimes you can get maybe discouraged and overwhelmed when you see all of these photos and you think that, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that. And then we have to go here, go there. And um, you will think that, you know what, I just... I just don't want to deal with all of this. I just want to go and have fun on that day. The third reason can be because you're having a very, very small wedding, maybe an elopement wedding when it's just the two of you and witnesses. Maybe you are just running to the courthouse to get married and you don't feel like there is much to document and take pictures of. You are going to a destination wedding with a very, very small amount of people or group and you just don't feel like there is much um, reason or or occasion for a photographer to be taking pictures. Fourth reason is that you just hate having pictures taken which a lot of us don't feel comfortable in front of the camera just like I am right now. (laughs) Uh, That's just something that takes a long time to get used to most of us just get over it and say okay this just needs to be done I want pictures so I have to be in front of the camera but I can imagine that some couples would decide not to have a photographer because of they feel so intimidated about the camera on their face and lastly maybe you just genuinely feel like you don't need pictures um that you would actually use in some way like having your albums done like I was talking about it in one of my previous episodes or uh, printing out one photo that goes on your wall and you're thinking why would I uh, hire a wedding photographer and spend so much money just to have one picture on my wall or you just thinking that I would just put them on a CD in my in my drawer and never really look at it they're just gonna be archived somewhere and you just really don't feel the value. You don't have any goal or idea. What are you going to do with these pictures? Everybody says I need to have them, but I I really just don't want to own these photos. <laughs> Speaking about not needing your photos, as a first step, I would suggest you if you're trying to decide, do you want to hire a photographer? Is that worth the money or not? Uh, is kind of try to figure out what are you going to do with the photos do you need them for a specific goal for example uh, I want to have good photos with my grandparents because I don't know how long they're going to be around so uh, it's very important for me or it's very important for me to have group pictures with my parents or with my families that I haven't seen for years or with my friends everybody looks so pretty and uh 
dressed up so nice that this is a great occasion to have these pictures taken or you want to save some photos to show for your kids uh, that you don't have yet so they can see how mom and dad got married or you want to show it online for people who couldn't be at the wedding so that's why you want to have some pictures taken so that's kind of a good way to get a sense of why would you want to have a photographer why and what would happen if you don't have it how can you compromise in some way are these going to be value for you in the future so that's what i'm kind of uh, trying to encourage you to think about the future not the not the right now how do i feel now or what do i want to do right now so let's say you want to be convinced to have a wedding photographer you just still have these boundaries and worries and insecurities about lots of things uh, I want to tell you a couple of ideas for example if you don't have enough money if you feel like money is the problem when it comes to hiring a wedding photographer I would suggest you once you find a f wedding photographer to try to ask them if they have some kind of payment plan or payment option, even monthly payments. I, for example, have those for my clients. So it's easier for you to, um, you know, spend the money a little bit at a time than give them so much at once if that's helpful. And also you can uh, ask your guests to give you as a gift uh, uh, wedding photography services. So don't just think about tangible products like an album. You can also set up a wedding registry with uh, cash funds like uh, Zola has this uh, really good option on their website or maybe you will think about finding a very cheap photographer maybe a student like a photography student from the your local high school or university who's just starting out and they don't charge you as much or they're willing to work for free uh, which is a good alternative for you if you don't have money for a professional photographer but you just need to be okay with some of the risks that you're taking, uh, finding those kind of people. What if they don't show up? They probably don't have any insurance or um, any type of contract with you. What if the pictures uh, turn out really bad? They lose the files or, you know, anything uh, bad things can happen with professional photographers too. But um you know, they're more prepared and more experienced for uh, problems and issues to run in. So I would encourage you if you go uh, with that route to find somebody who's just a hobbyist to make sure that they are, you know, very excited and um, about this opportunity. I think that would for me be a, a good sign if somebody is so excited to to have this opportunity to photograph a wedding that they would uh, most likely be uh, trusted. And lastly, you can really just ask uh, somebody that you know, a guest, a family member to bring their camera, to be taking pictures with their phone. Just make people be aware that you are not having a designated photographer whose job is to take pictures so if you're still listening me talking but you keep thinking there's no way i'm going to have a photographer there's no i don't care about pictures on my wedding day i don't care about uh, documenting this event i just want to push you a little bit and help you see that even just having a couple of photos with your family with your new family with uh, with people who came there to celebrate with you that's how valuable that's going to be for you later in your life maybe right now you are annoyed with everybody and annoyed with all of this wedding planning and you're tired and you really don't feel like standing in front of the camera smiling but just think about spending just two minutes to just stand in front of the camera snap that photo and you never know when you're gonna lose somebody from your family when you're gonna have when you're never gonna see somebody in your life and you're gonna just have that one photo even if it's not a, a professional photographer and doesn't have to be you can just do that with your phone but just 
to take the time on your wedding day to snap that picture because it might become important for you. And even if you don't feel that way, I mean, unless it's like a secret wedding that you don't want it to be documented in any sort of way, maybe then I can see why you wouldn't want to have pictures. <laughs> in my episode number eight, I was talking about unplugged weddings, which means when a couple would have a, a professional photographer and they would ask couple uh, not couples uh, guests to not take pictures during the wedding day and in that episode I also shared some of my opinions and thoughts that are kind of mixed uh, about why I think that why is it good for you if uh, your guests are taking pictures and they're not being asked to put their phone away during the ceremony or any other part of your wedding day if you are not having a professional photographer you are most likely are going to have a plugged wedding <laughs> which means that you are you do want to encourage your uh, guests to take pictures so it's the opposite of the unplugged wedding you can do this by maybe setting up some kind of signs around the event you know how they have these unplugged wedding signs in front of the door maybe you can have the opposite and encourage them to take Take pictures give them a hashtag that they can uh, post it on Instagram or maybe you can put some notes on the tables or put them on the invitation maybe you can set up some kind of game for them I, I saw on Pinterest they have these really cute like scavenger hunt type of uh, games where you have a list of things that you need to take pictures of during the wedding and you, as a guest that can be a pretty fun thing to do especially if you are somebody who loves to take pictures and love these kind of things so for example take a picture of a detail on that you see and you love take a picture of the couple kissing or take a picture with you with some with another guest so you take all of you it's basically a shot list <laughs> list of things you need to take pictures of and I love this because that way everybody that way you're gonna get pictures of these things that are important for you eventually and essentially from everybody who you know who takes this game a little bit more seriously and not just all of these things that you may put on the list but also you get these things from different perspectives from other people's viewpoint you can have kids who are so small and they take pictures from so low and that can look really cool and you can see some things that you wouldn't notice before or you can have pictures who uh, value different things who love to take pictures with their grandparents or somebody dancing or drinking or they would go out to take picture of the whole venue of the location for you so I think this game can get pretty exciting and fun. If you're thinking about maybe giving them some kind of camera, you can buy or rent. I don't know if you can rent, but you can for sure buy these disposable uh, cameras that you can maybe put one on each table and people can just grab it. That would encourage them even more if they don't want to use their own phone. So anyway, these are really good ideas to encourage your guests to take pictures. But if you do have somebody designated who signed up and volunteered to take pictures for you just make sure that you thank them at the end maybe you can you know give them some special gift that they feel really appreciated because trust me I know as a wedding photographer how hard this job is uh, mentally and physically so just make sure that you thank these people that they uh, took the effort and wanted to help you out or you can make like a little challenge between the guests and uh, whoever gets the most creative or best photos they can win a prize so that's also these are little games that are really good to encourage people to be taking pictures and then there are also a lot of really good apps and companies that would work with you to uh, collect these photos from your guests from from all of their phone because you know you're gonna have maybe hundreds of people taking pictures 
pictures and videos and it's, it's kind of hard to have them all emailed or, you know, collected them on a USB or something like that. So there are some uh, companies and I'm going to put them on a show note who would provide you with a phone number and then your guests can all just text those pictures to that phone number. And that way you're going to collect them all in one gallery. Uh, there are some companies who also collect wet uh, videos and then they would edit them together. So you have like a nice little film from your wedding day, which is also pretty cool. I'm sorry, guys. Can you hear this? There are people working outside and they're so loud, but I'm just going to keep going. Pretend like nothing's happening. <laughs> There's a company who also does live streaming. So you can send or a couple or not couples. Uh, guests can uh, uh, text these pictures to a specific phone number and then they can be projected on a wall during the wedding day, which is also very fun. I'm sure you saw some of those in uh, bigger events. Uh, when people people's pictures will just pop up on a wall so that's also really cool and I think the company is let me just look it up the company's name is Tackboard and then there's also Wed, Wed Mix who does the wedding uh, videos and my last tip is that if you decided on not hiring a wedding photographer and you're just gonna have pictures taken uh, here and there candidly with guests you can al also always have hire a photographer for a different day so you would you can dress up and they're usually cheaper because they would have like an hourly rate for a couple hundred dollars and stuff of thousands of dollars hire somebody go to a location maybe you can go to the place where you got married if you really want to have a same environment or a similar environment but maybe you want something different maybe you want to dress up in your same outfit maybe you want to have something different maybe you want to bring your um, family and friends to have those group shots taken maybe you just want some pictures just the two of you remember that when those pictures are done you're gonna know anytime you look at those photos you are going to know that we took these on a separate day this is not a wedding but if you're okay with that if you uh, taking those pictures for the sake of having a nice portraits of the two of you or have some uh, candid moments of the two of you when you just want to uh, the purpose of the picture is to feel the love and the connection and to celebrate the the marriage it's good but if you want to recreate the actual wedding then that's not gonna work it has to happen on actual wedding because every time you look at the picture you're gonna know that okay this wasn't taken on that same day <laughs> if you are leaning towards documenting your wedding day i created an ebook a pdf where i'm sharing six tips on how to better document your wedding day if you're interested about that then you can download it and um let me know what you think about it <laughs> okay guys thank you so much for listening to this episode if you know somebody who would benefit from uh, this topic then feel free to share my podcast my video i would uh, really appreciate that and next week i am going to be talking about multicultural couples about couples oh my god seriously and next week's topic is going to be about multicultural marriage mixed cultured relationships how do we know if we are with somebody for their personality or with somebody just for their culture okay these people are getting really loud so i'm just gonna <laughs> and this episode thank you so much again for tuning in and i will talk to you guys next week bye everybody